Oh my gosh, I have seven follicles. That then gives me three attempts at, at implantation, because I'm done. This is, I'm not doing another IVF round. I will never do this again. We probably may get a set of twins out of it. Hey, you know, I always wanted a big family. It makes me want to cry thinking about it, that I get to finally, maybe actually have this big family I always wanted. So I had my egg retrieval today, and they were able to get out six eggs, so it's perfect. On September 26th is my implantation day, so it's all scheduled. Now it's starting to feel more real, because I think I, not that I was numb, but I think I was just like, okay, I accomplished a goal, you know, got the, the embryos, and then it was just like, kind of like a lull time, just kind of needed to wait till my period started, and then period started, and then call them, and it's exciting. It's, just, it's such a trip, it's like in five weeks, I am gonna be pregnant. I mean, I guess, is a possibility it may not stick. I am here today for my baseline ultrasound for pre-implantation. I don't know how important this is, but I guess if they go in there and they see like some cysts or whatever, but I think even at this point with implantation, having the cysts wouldn't matter. It's just really the health of my uterus. I feel good today. I cannot believe how much more medication I'm gonna have to take. I thought that it was the last time that I was gonna have to take Lupron. Nope. I had to buy another vial. I got to start Lupron next Friday and take that for like, I don't know, seven, eight, eight or something days. And then I start on the estrogen patches and then I start on progesterone shots. And those progesterone shots don't stop until I'm 12 weeks pregnant. It was so cool to hear that when the patient coordinator, she said, okay, it sounds like you have enough progesterone to last you through your 12 weeks of pregnancy. It made it seem really real, so... So my uterus is looking good, no cysts. Doctor said we are ready to move forward with everything. I asked him when after implantation do we do the beta testing and he said about 10 days afterwards. And I think he said that once they implant, I'd be considered two and a half weeks pregnant at that point. So yeah, and then I asked him what number are they looking for the beta and he said above 30 is good, but I mean ideally like you know, in the hundreds would be great, but as long as it's above 30, and of course, as long as it is doubled every by every couple days. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so stressful. I'm gonna try not to stress. Realize that, you know, if we implant two, it doesn't work, then we have six more that we can try, and what we'll get a baby out of this, I know it. Um, I asked him different things I could be doing in the meantime to help implantation, and he said, they really, there's no scientific proof that any of these different myths and things like pineapple core and acupuncture and all those kind of things really work. The odds are like if you have a 50% chance of getting pregnant, if the first time it doesn't work, the second time likely will, whether you did acupuncture or ate extra pineapple or not. So he's, there's nothing really he can recommend. We are about two weeks and two days from my implant. What I've been doing is I do my estrogen patches. This is my second round. You're supposed to change it every two days. So I do that all the way up to 12 weeks of pregnancy. I introduce the progesterone injections on the 21st. So I still have another week or so. It's about one week before my implant. And then as far as like health wise, I've been doing my prenatal vitamin. This one seems to be fine. I think it's just like a, I'll show you. One a day women's prenatal. And then um, when I was doing acupuncture, they gave me this liquid D. I don't even know if you can get it online or not. This just was through the acupuncturist, but I mean everything you can get online nowadays. But this is like a crazy amount of vitamin D. It's like 500% of what you need. So I just do one little small drop. And you know, I do, get in the sun a little bit like before I take my dog to the vet I'm gonna take him for a little walk so I'll get some sun and and there's also vitamin D in those vitamins too so supposedly vitamin D or they found with studies that women who have difficulties conceiving that they are low on vitamin D and then I've been trying to avoid dairy but that's one of the dietary things that I have been failing on. Yesterday I had pasta, this morning had a little bit of leftovers for breakfast and then also had a chocolate croissant. And then I still have been drinking wine. 
So, and I wanted, I don't know if necessarily that is bad. It's just, I think it's too much sugar. So, and it's just not good and it's extra calories. So that I'm giving up for sure. Timber 19th. Is that what it is? Yeah, I had my um, lining check one week before implantation lining check. And my lining was at an 11. So that's good. He said he wants it above eight. So he says we're right on track. Still seems like f so far away, but it isn't. I mean, this literally is in like six or seven days. I'm gonna implant two. Uh, the doctor was like, okay, and like he's so excited. Then like I look back at the patient coordinator, and she's like, oh. So they seem excited about it. I had asked the doctor. I said my chance with twins is about ten percent, right? And he said um, he's talked so low, and I don't want to keep asking him, huh, huh, huh. I don't know why for some reason. I don't want to be like I didn't hear you. But I think he said that my chance with twins is about 42%. The labs are good. And I think you should have a higher chance. And then he said, now your chances of having twins is blah, blah, blah. And I didn't hear what he said. So he was speaking of my chances overall of having a, of this implantation working is, um, I guess still in the forties, which it's about right. It's like flipping a coin. You have a 50% chance of getting heads. I'm starting to get nervous that this isn't gonna work. It's transfer day, here with my hubby, pulling into our place. We're really excited, I'm I'm happy this morning. Um, a little nervous, like I feel like I can throw up, kind of. But I don't know if it's because I guzzled so much water so fast, but I feel happy. It is what it is, sink or swim. No reason to be overly nervous or stressed about it. The babies are in, back home. Ian um, came home with me. Got some uh, McDonald's. And I'm on the couch watching uh, YouTube and I'm just gonna pretty much be here for the rest of the day. I'm just not, you know, I'm not gonna do like any chores or anything too strenuous. I've been moving around though. Like I made the bed on the couch and been up and down the stairs. But it's crazy, I'm pregnant. I mean, I know it's not for sure until the beta test, but I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'll have to show you guys the pictures of my, of my eggs. When they took it out of the freezing process, the first one they pulled out, the carrier they had it in broke. So we lost one of them. We lost one of the embryos and one of the grade ones, they said. That was disappointing, but it's okay. I just like, I'm not gonna go negative with it. So we got two one, two good ones. They were all just really, talked to us, talked us through it. It was just, it was a good experience. So my beta will be on October 5th. It's in nine days. I'll do my first beta. And then I go in on the 8th, I think. Yeah, which would be that Monday. So I go in on a Friday and a Monday for the final. So we need it above 30 and the hundreds would be best. And I have a great feeling about this. They just, I just tell them, just get, get all cozy and warm in there. You're safe. I'll take care of you, just latch on, and and I'll do the rest. I've been laying down a lot. I'm going to get get up just a little bit. Bed rest is not proven to work. The best way to think of it is think about all the people out there in the world that didn't even know they were pregnant, and they were going about their normal lives and were able to carry their pregnancy just fine. So, and then also my doctor said something kind of interesting because everybody's always worried that the embryo is going to fall out when you get up, like you have to lay down. And he said, think of it as an eyelash in the eye. If you bend down and shake, sh try to shake out the eyelash, it's not going to come out. I was like, oh, that's actually a really good analogy. I never thought about it that way. And then he said, uh, if we were to go back in with the catheter and try to take out the embryos, that we would not be able to get them. So they're attached. So it's just, I guess, about a matter of them implanting, sinking in there into that nutrient-rich uterus. The bladder was no joke. At first it wasn't that bad, but oh gosh, I had to hold that in for so long. And then they put the um, stirrups, or not stirrups, I don't know, whatever the things that they insert when you do a gyno exam. So they put that in there then pressing with the ultrasound onto my bladder and then putting the catheter in. The, they want your bladder full because 
it gives a better visual of the uterus. So it's kind of cool. You got I got to see the catheter inserting and then they call the, the embryologist and then the embryologist comes in with the tube and says two embryos and then inserts it in there. And then you see, it gets like little air bubbles as the doctor's doing settings. Like those aren't the embryos, but that's basically the embryo being put there. And they, I guess they do that on purpose so they can see that, okay, it came out of the tube. They let me down and oh God, it was amazing. Then I got to finally release my bladder and I gave doc my doctor a hug. And then the uh, patient coordinator has been with me for like almost from the very beginning. So, so the way the beta is going to work, I go in on the 5th and the 8th. So on the 5th, I just go in any time between 9 and 10 a.m. And then they will give me a call within two hours with the result. So it is three days until my first beta draw. I almost gave in and told Ian, let's go over to CVS and let's get, or even like the dollar store and let's go get some pregnancy tests because it was, I think five days past my days past transfer. And I figured maybe it might pop up. It was a five day blast, so it'd be 10 days old but Ian didn't want to do it because he's like no let's just wait he didn't really I didn't really feel like his excuse was good enough except just wanting to follow the rules because he's a rule follower and I'm not it's not necessarily going to change the outcome I mean it still could be negative on Friday but at least it will know for sure and if let's say I got a negative test and then I end up being positive on Friday here I was punishing myself in a way for testing early by being depressed that it didn't work. So I'm gonna be patient. Three days is literally, will go by so fast. So I've been extremely emotional at work. Like the smallest thing is making me cry. I think one thing is my mom encouraged me not to test early. Um, Ian doesn't want me to test early because he is scared that I'm gonna be really disappointed if there's bad news. Tomorrow's my test. I kind of feel like I want to know. Ian's out of town. He went down south to do an event, so he's staying overnight. So it's just me. And I'm actually going to do my shot on my own tonight, too. But I think I'm going to get a test tonight. And I feel like I'm kind of like letting other people tell me what to do. And it's making me unhappy not knowing. I'm going to take one tonight. And then I'm going to also take one in the morning. So I'm going to show you guys that. I'm going to go run over by the store. Hey, I got to get dog food for Frankie anyways. And Okay, I'm back home. Fed Frankie so that he could leave me alone. <laughs> I'm all by myself, nobody's here. What I'm trying to find out is if I can, okay, yeah, you can, I wanna be able to collect the urine in a cup um, instead of trying to pee on it. So I always feel like I'm not gonna like get the right spot and I'm gonna ruin the test. Okay, so we are to pull the test stick, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I got this first response. You could tell six days sooner than your missed period. I would technically, if we were gonna go by my regular cycle, I'd be three days late. So this should be pretty freaking accurate. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. There are five seconds in the yellow water. Okay, laying down. Put this back on and lay it flat. Okay, good, it's moving. Okay, so. I don't know. Oh my God, I think I'm starting to see two lines. <laughs> I have two pink lines. <laughs> 